Lions live in large groups called prides that hunt together, protect each other and help each other raise their cubs. Though lions today face problems such as environmental changes and conflicts with farmers and livestock owners, protected areas like the Masai Mara Game Reserve give them a safe place to live and grow the next generation of Lion Pride members. This place is rich. Every corner you turn around, there will be a predator. Could be a hyena, a lion, a leopard, a cheetah, and many other predators that are small and big. If I would define lions in one word, they are the rulers. Think of the savanna. Think of all the animals around them. They rule. They have the power. The biggest to the smallest, they actually are the managers of the savanna. The Mara and the Serengeti are one of the last great wildlife areas on Earth. But like everywhere, they're under pressure. They're magnificent, but we need to nurture them. That's what I love about the Mara. I mean, we've been having a drought here, and last night it pelted with rain. It's just created this incredible morning. We've got the lions with the little cubs, but they've already fed last night on a zebra. And now the mums seem as if they want to hurry those little cubs back towards Lake Nakuru. That's where it's safe for them. They've got cover, they can lie out there during the daytime. Seeing them, that they are mothers, that they continue on the family tree of big cats. Even with the hardships, there are droughts, they are rainfalls, and they still live and survive. How great is that? I love to watch the sisterhood of the lionesses and feel their courage and their power and their nurturing of their young. This time of year, there always tends to be loads of cubs. Over the last four years, we've seen definite peaks of you know, birthing during this time. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure if you've been around, you've probably seen a lot of little cubs, some tiny cubs. Yeah. Lion cubs, though small and cute, are tough and resilient like their parents. Play fighting with their siblings and mothers helps them to practice their hunting and fighting skills. Seeing the little cubs be born and then grow into mothers themselves and then grandmothers and seeing the cycle over and over again how can you not feel connected? Lions have always dominated the African savannas, but their environment is changing. Looks can be deceiving. Despite their size and strength, their numbers are declining. Unfortunately, within the last 30 years of being here, we've lost a lot of habitat. So it does look quite denuded to what it used to be. This area used to be thick bush, so it was a perfect place for lions to lie up during the heat of the day, for mothers to hide their cubs away in safety. But of course, as the climate has become drier, it's become tougher for the lions to find really good places to find shade during the daytime. If I had to define the essence of a lion in a single word, I think warriors. Lions are powerful predators and eat everything from zebras to farm cows. Herdsmen will sometimes retaliate against predators that kill livestock by lacing a carcass with poison. When the predators return, they die from eating the poison meat. There are cheap pesticides that are lethal to predators and birds of prey. The knock-on effect can be devastating. I know that your project's been trying to grapple with the poisoning issue. It's a very difficult thing to, to deal with actually because it's completely indiscriminate. You put down some poison and it'll kill anything and everything that comes into it from lions to hyenas to jackals to vultures and eagles and all, all manner of animals will, will perish because of that. I know there's been research that has shown that actually the impact of cattle on the savanna landscape now is literally sort of forcing wild herbivores to vacate the area and it's becoming a real issue. I think within the protected areas, especially the conservancies, the, the numbers are 
good. Outside of those protected areas, I think that's where a lot of work needs to be done because mm. these sorts of habitats, these sorts of areas are rarely critical to lions within the, the wildlife areas too. Well, what about the tourism and the impact of all the vehicles? We, we seem to have so many more vehicles in that area as well. Tourism brings a large number of people to the Mara region to observe lions and their cubs in their natural habitat. The money from tourism helps to pay for the upkeep and protection of the Maasai Mara, helping to safeguard the lions and other creatures. But it has to be sustainable, and the model adopted by the wildlife conservancies bordering the reserve encourages lower density tourism with less impact on the environment. Controlling off-road driving is a priority. I'm worried. The place where Charm has those cubs is terribly exposed. Now those cubs are adorable. Cars are going to want to get closer and closer to get a good look. So we've spoken to the rangers at Governor's Camp and they're going to do what they often do in these situations. They're going to block off some of the roads. And this is going to make the world of difference for Charm. At least she won't be forced to move those cubs unless she really wants to do it. It would be an absolute tragedy if we didn't really step up and protect these extraordinary wild places. There are so few left in the world now. We need people to step up. We need the next generation to have really strong leaders that we can keep this cycle going. I'm hoping that people will be totally awed by the presence of these great cats, but also about how fragile their existence is. Man is simply pushing wildlife off the planet. We have to ensure that there will always be a piece of wilderness there for the great cats.